Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss using a microphone in addition to a pickup on the double bass in a live situation. I'm also going to test three different microphones, the DPA 4099, the ProDype BL21 and the Remic D5400. I'll test each microphone in the room here and we'll discuss my findings. I'll play a random short test on each utilizing Pizzicato as well as Arco playing. Finally, towards the end of the video, I'll discuss each microphone's bleed from other sound sources. At the time of making this video, I had a gig playing with the Royal Norwegian Navy Wind Orchestra. So I was sitting next to a drum kit and in front of the trumpets and trombones playing bass. I recorded each microphone during a rehearsal directly through the mic preamp of my RME interface and I made a rather improvised video using my phone so apologies in advance for the quality of the video in this section. Big shout out to Bassanova in Oslo. It's a shop in central Oslo specializing in upright bass. They sell new and refurbished upright basses, pickups, microphones, sheet music, strings, anything you need. They also carry gear for the electric bassist. They were kind enough to lend me two of the microphones in this test. Check them out at the link below. So, let's start by showing you the microphones in question. The Danish-made DPA 4099 has become kind of a standard for upright bass clip-on microphones. It has a very practical attachment to the instrument that feels solid and safe. It locks to the rubber mounting foot with a metal clip that squeezes around the end of the gooseneck of the mic. The French-made ProDype BL21 has the same kind of attachment design as the, uh, as the DPA. However, it does not feature the locking detail. You simply insert the gooseneck into the angled slot of the rubber mounting foot. While testing it seemed, it seemed safe enough, but I would like to see some sort of added locking system just to be 100% sure of it not falling off the base. The Remic D5400 is Remic's microphone for studio and live performers of chamber, classical jazz and folk music. They claim it's got superior gain before feedback, moderate suppression of neighbor instruments and ambient noise. So, first of all, how easy are these to attach? I find the DPA and the ProDype to be equally simple to attach to the instrument. One can choose to attach them with a the gooseneck coming through the feet of the bridge below the strings or from the top above the strings. My preference has always been the between the feet solution as I don't like to have to compromise my playing technique due to Mike's position. The above the strings position will give more distance to the body of the bass. It would give the sound slightly more space to evolve but at the expense of picking up more ambient sound, like drums, piano, trumpets. Experiment with what sounds best and works for you. Both the DPA and the ProDype gives you ample room of adjustment sideways over the instrument, as well as close to the body or further away. Again, experiment to find your instrument's sweet spot in positioning. The Remic, on the other hand, was not so intuitive for me to mount. It looks really simple from their website. It comes in a foam enclosure that's kind of shaped to fit under the fingerboard. However, every single base is different in how the body is rounded, the distance between the fingerboard and the body, the shape of the underside of the fingerboard, etc. On my base, I couldn't find a satisfactory way of attaching it, giving me a safe feeling of it not suddenly falling to the ground. The cable from the mic comes with a round rubber thing to also sandwich between the fingerboard and the body. This is supposed to take away the pull of the cable from the microphone itself. And it does this if you manage to fasten it. I found the experience of attaching the Remic to my base frustrating and not at all satisfying. I would not trust that this will not fall off the base mid performance. I also plucked the strings at various locations on the fingerboard and at one point my thumb knocked the microphone out of its position and had me scrambling for the volume knob as the monitor was feeding back because the mic had fallen on top of it. Finally, this all amounts to the least flexible mount of the microphones as I could barely make it sit through a whole piece, let alone have any leeway of adjusting it where it's placed for sound quality reasons. That aside, let's see how they sound. 
The following examples are only the microphones, straight into the preamp, no EQ. Listening back to the DPA, um, first thing that I think about is that it's got a really full bodied sound. You can hear all the fundamentals and you also get some of the finger sounds uh, that we kind of miss when we use a piezo pickup. Um, you hear some of the shifts in a different way and playing with a bow really opens up the, the character of the instrument. It sounds, to my ears on the headphones, it's exactly as sitting and playing the bass. That, that This is the sound I hear when I'm playing the instrument in, in, in my practice room or in, on, on stage, really, acoustically. So, so it's a, that's a big five star from me. Okay, on to the next one. Listening to the ProDype microphone, um, to me this has much less defined bottom end. It doesn't have the same kind of punch as a DPA, but the high end is kind of a little bit more open and blossomy. I can hear more of the clicking, the string sounds, the finger sounds. That might be good. I mean, this is this will be a personal preference. I, I like it really. Uh, actually, I liked it so much that I ended up using the ProDype on the on the shows that I did with the Royal Norwegian Navy band uh, the other week. So I ended up using that live, and it worked really well. I was using um, wedge an active wedge, which was located behind me to avoid feedback, and I was mixing my own monitor sound of my bass so I could blend between the piezo and uh, the product microphone, and it worked really, really well. I got the low end from the piezo, which is lacking kind of in this microphone, and then I got like the acoustic, um, you know, uh, fairy dust or whatever you want to call it on, on top with a little bit of finger sounds, the little clicks from the strings every now and then, the bite of the bow, the natural sounding hair from the bow. Um, I like the bowing sound, by the way, of the ProDype. I mean, I don't prefer the DPA or the ProDype in the bowing. It's kind of two different characters in a way. So it'll be your preference will have to dictate. But at the price, I mean, it costs like uh, one sixth or one seventh of uh, of the price of the of the DPA, and it's like that's a that's a steal, really. That's a steal. This this a product my mic is a fantastic value for money. Um, that in combination with the piezo is is really really a good combo.
Listening back at the Remick, um, to my ears, this actually has even slightly less bottom end uh, than the Prodipe and especially the DPA. The DPI is a big winner in that regard. But uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it, you, you can hear that the, that the placement of the microphone is not optimal to my ears. I mean, it has a lot more string noise. I mean, that's not so strange as it's sitting right below the fingerboard. So it's picking the sound up from a different place. And also my breathing is a little bit too much. I feel it really picks up all my breaths in a way where it's sitting is quite close to, to my face. Basically, uh, the Boeing sound of the Remick is to my ears, probably the weakest one of the three. Um, it picks up quite a lot of bone noises. It's easy to hear. You really hear the rosin. Again, some people might like that. It's not my cup of tea. All in all, I think that the Remick is a disappointment to me. I've heard good things about it, but the mounting of it, the limited adjustability of the positioning due to the fact that it will just fall off and the fact that it's picking up a lot of breathing noise, bowing noise, finger noise, and it doesn't have the, the full deep bass tone of the other microphones. Now for the recordings from the rehearsal. Let me first say that there's none of these microphones that totally eliminate surrounding sound, obviously, that's impossible. Uh, the upright bass is kind of a soft spoken instrument. I mean, especially if you compare it to a full drum set, trumpets, trombones, there is no way the instrument acoustically can compete with that without help of amplification, right? So the microphone is going to pick up sounds around. It's just a matter of how much of it is it picking up and is it picking up enough of the sound of the instrument to actually make a difference. So let's check it out. I'll do this in the same order like before. The first microphone will be the DPA and then the Prodipe and finally the Remic. And then we'll discuss a little bit in between each one. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, in a full band setting or full orchestra setting, I, I must say, um, it picks up quite a lot of the other instruments, which is very natural. I mean, the, the, the acoustic sound of the double bass is, is no match for trombones and trumpets and, and, and a full drum kit, obviously. So to eliminate all that, you would have to be in an air sealed room uh, away from the other instruments to avoid any bleed whatsoever. But I think the DPA does a, a decent job at holding its own. I can hear all the notes. I hear the fundamentals. I hear most of the bass, not much of the finger so sound left when the drums are playing, especially on the last uh, example with a rather loud snare drum. Um, I have to say though that um, when we play in settings like this with the piezo and the microphone, Normally we will also be using an amp for the piezo, which I did, I had my wedge behind me. So there's going to be some bleed also from that. Um, but I, I can still hear the DPA, the character of the DPA, uh, the solid fundamentals and the acoustic qualities of the microphone. Sound engineers tell me that using a microphone, even though it 
picks up bleed from other instruments, adds warmth and adds, adds a third dimension to the sound from a piezo. So even though you can hear a lot of bleed, it's still worthwhile to use it like this. And also, I was mixing my own bass uh, sound in my own monitor. I was able to get a very good blend. So I really felt the acoustic vibe of the instrument much more than when I'm playing with only the piezo into a bass amp, for instance. So let's check out the Prodipe in the same kind of setting. Okay, the prodipe in this setting. Well, uh, the bleed is about the same. Um, you don't get the deep bass um, naturally since it's not really there in the same way as a DPA, but I'm not sure that, make, that, that, that means a lot uh, because I feel it's still quite clear to, to hear the bass tone, the notes I'm playing. It's actually maybe even a bit easier to hear them in this kind of uh, sound character. Um, that's probably why I ended up using this microphone for the gig, the actual gig, after testing the three. Um, it was kind of easier to get a good monitor sound, and, and I figured, yeah, let's try the cheapest one now and, and see how it works. And there were no complaints. The sound guy was really happy with the bass sound, and, and everybody were pleased. And listening to the Arco sound in this example, I think it sounds really, really natural, really acoustic, and, and you can... It blossoms in, in, in the top frequencies in a very musical way. And I felt like that also when during the gig, that this microphone and Arco and pits and everything, you can hear the attack of the pits in a different way than the DPA, uh, in a positive way, to my ears anyway. So yeah, all in all, I'm, I'm really liking the product microphone, actually. I'm liking it more and more. Let's check out the Remick. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's a Remick. Well, listening to that, um, I think I have to say that that is actually the weakest one in the group. I mean, it picks up more bleed, actually, than the two others. I think the placement of the microphone, of the Remick microphone, is a problem. It's placed in an area 
where there's not a lot of acoustic sound. I mean, there's a whole lot more sound down by the bridge, obviously. I mean, that's where the, most of the sound gets transferred from the strings into the instrument. So there's going to be more sound pressure there, and it's going to be easier to, to make a mic that would um, that you would hear better than to place it up by under the fingerboard. Now, so of the three, I think the Remick worked least well. I mean, the, the kind of thin bottom end uh, amplified itself when the other instruments were around. Uh, I couldn't really get a satisfactory monitor mix with uh, with this microphone. But anyway, they have a, a live microphone that is uh, meant to be used in, uh, in really loud situations, probably would suit this kind of gig better. I'll try to get hold of that and make a review of that a little bit later. But for, for, for this test between those three microphones, I would say that my preference would be the Prodipe actually. I mean, I, I like the Prodipe about as much as I like the DPA and the DPA I've known. I've, I've had the DPA for 10 years, 50, for a long time. And I've been using that on gigs everywhere. Uh, I, I really know the DPA microphone, but I think it had some qualities as a DPA doesn't have. And the DPA, DPA has a lot of qualities that the Prodipe doesn't have. But for the price, you can't beat the, the Prodipe. It's a fantastic value microphone. Um, I will say that if DPA feels higher quality overall, I mean, with the mounting bracket, everything is a little bit more solid. Um, you get the, the, the heritage of the DPA name. It's really well respected in the audio industry and uh, for good reason, it's excellent microphones. Um, everybody knows them, everybody has worked with them, everybody prefers them, kind of, sort of. But if you're on a budget, the Prodipe is excellent value for money. I hope you find this video helpful, and if you do, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the ring bell. It really helps me and it inspires me to keep releasing videos like this. Thanks for watching, see you next time.